All right, what's going on everybody? Today is gonna to be a video response for RGA Collect Sets. Um, he hit 200 subscribers and uh, is doing a video response for a contest that he's holding. And um, I love his channel. I definitely want to get in there and support it. And uh, so he wanted us to do a starting lineup for our favorite team. And I was thinking about doing the Phillies, but see, RJ is a Phillies guy too. He actually lives in Philly. I uh, used to live out there, but he um, he did the Phillies, and I thought he really covered it well. Um, and uh, I thought, you know what, I I'm going to do the Jazz. I'm, I'm going to do, because really, at the end of the day, they're they're my favorite team. This is my hometown team. And uh, we're going to jump into the Jazz. Um, on the backdrop there, I just kind of did some honorable mentions. Um, I was really kind of mulling Pete Maravich over, which I believe that is a New Orleans Jazz card. But uh, Pete Maravich, he was only with the Jazz in Utah for part of one season, which was the very first year that they were in town. Uh, the first year they moved from New Orleans to Utah was the 1979-80 season. Um, Maravich, that, it was his last year. He played 17 games for the Jazz. I mean, at one point, because his knee was so bad, he couldn't practice. And the coach at the time only played guys who practiced, which you wouldn't see that in today's NBA. At one point, Maravich rode the bench for 24 straight games. They ended up putting him on waivers. Uh, he didn't even play the full season. And then he ended up joining up with the Celtics um, to kind of finish out the year. And so I thought, you know, 17 games, I don't know that that's enough that I could really put him in my starting five of the Utah Jazz. So I love Pete Maravich. Um, I've got his throwback jersey. I wear it when I go to Jazz games. Um, and uh, he's a great player. I love him. One of my all-time favorites. But I thought, I, I just can't put him in the lineup for this. I'm looking for, you know, Utah Jazz. And so I was thinking... Uh, when I was doing this, their overall Utah Jazz stats when applicable. And I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I'm just going to do a starting five. And uh, my big man, as you'll see, Mark Eaton is on the backdrop. He has his number 53 retired. He was a great player, awesome, prolific shot blocker, and uh, well-loved member of the Jazz family. We lost him last year. He passed away. And uh, he was just a super friendly guy. Um, it was great watching him play. I, I saw him a lot in person uh, playing when I was a kid and uh, going to games and following the team. But for my center, I am going to pick our current big man, Rudy Gobert. Three-time defensive player of the year. Um, I just felt like that warranted his selection for this. Um, I think Eaton got it once. Um and uh, Rudy's got three, so I thought, you know what, that, you know, he's got more All-Star games. Mark Eaton played in one. He played in the 89 All-Star game in Houston with Carmelo and John Stockton. The Jets had three three players that year. Rudy has had two All-Star appearances. Hopefully, he'll get picked as a reserve this year. We'll see. I'm going to show him here. This is the gold hoops. I did show this card a little while ago. This was a recent pickup. This one is numbered out of 10. Rudy is going to be my all-time Utah Jazz starting center. Um... My four words, I am going to go. This one obviously is going to be no surprise. <clears throat> I'm going to do the mailman, Carmelone, my all time favorite basketball player. I am just a diehard Carmelone fan. And, you know, fittingly enough, you could argue either he or John Stockton would be the best player in the history of the franchise. Um, you know, he was a two time dream teamer. Um, Two time, you know, gold medalist both times, tons of all star games. He's the second all time leading scorer in the NBA, uh, two MVP awards, and uh, he was just a, a monster. Carmelone in his prime was just incredible. So I'm going to pick him, obviously, as my forward. My second forward, and this is kind of where I was trying to think about, well, who should I pick? I'm going with this guy, uh, Adrian Dantley. And uh, this is from the 1981 Tops. And uh, Adrian Dantley, so interesting career. I'm just going to put him up here with Pete for a second. Dantley, um, all six of his All-Star Game appearances were while he was with the Utah Jazz. Um, he is a Hall of Famer. He did play for several other teams after he played for the Jazz. Uh, he played for some teams before he played for the Jazz. Um, 
but uh, his best years, I think you could argue, were with the Utah Jazz. Uh, like I said, all six of his All-Star Game appearances were as a member of the Utah Jazz. Um, he was a two-time NBA scoring champion. Both times were with the Utah Jazz. Um, he is in the Hall of Fame. His number finally got retired. Um, there was rumor that he had a, a kind of a falling out with the previous ownership Um the, the Millers, Larry Miller in particular, is what, what was said about it. And for years after his Hall of Fame uh, induction, he didn't have his jersey retired. We had Mark Eaton, his jersey was retired. Um, Jeff Hornacek was awesome. His jersey was retired before Dantley's. Um, uh, gosh, Daryl Griffith's jersey was retired before Adrian Dantley's. I, I went to the Adrian Dantley jersey retirement. Um, it wasn't that long ago. It was maybe... 2010 or so around there uh, when they finally retired his jersey so very long overdue i'm glad they could bury the hatchet and retire number four for him so he is going to be my other forward and he, he had an important role in the history of the franchise too just because in those early years the jazz were really struggling to make it in the nba just as a market salt lake was i mean even now we're considered a small market team uh salt lake is it's booming. The population's growing like crazy. But um, at the time, we were a tiny market, played in a teeny tiny arena, the Salt Palace. I think max capacity in that place was like 12,000 and something. Um, and Dantley was kind of that first big star that the Jazz had to help get the team competitive. You know, him and Griffith and uh, some of those other players that kind of, you know, Ricky Green, some of those guys, they got the team in the playoffs and started making some noise, and then obviously Carmelo and John Stockton came along in the mid-80s and took the watch from there. So, my last two, the guard line. Obviously, this one's a no-brainer as well. We're going to go with John Stockton, NBA all-time leader in assists and steals, also a two-time uh, Olympic gold medal winner with the 92 and the 96 Dream Team, team uh, several all-star game appearances. I mean, he's just an awesome, awesome player. And a great two-way player. And again, you could argue that either he or Carl Malone um, are clearly the two best players in the history of the franchise. So those two are kind of no-brainers. My next guard wasn't so easy for me. Um, I was kind of thinking, okay, I tink I was just kind of tinkering around with it. I thought, okay, Jeff Hornacek. I love Jeff Hornacek. He was awesome. Um, and he was a huge part of the NBA Finals teams that we had in the late 90s. He kind of, you could argue, was probably the piece that helped get them over the hump when they got him. That they, you know, he helped kind of give them another score. I thought about Darren Williams, but then he was kind of a point guard, and I wanted to kind of do, you know, true to the positions a little bit. And so I'm going to go with another current guy, um, which probably isn't surprising for many. I'm going to go with, oh, bought my camera. Sorry about that. Donovan Mitchell. Um, this guy has all the makings of a superstar. Um, he's got a couple all-star game appearances now, um, and uh, he, he's playing great. I don't know how long we'll have him. You know, I kind of feel like he he's kind of a little bit, I don't want to say a malcontent, but it just, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there that he doesn't want to be here, that he wants to play in New York, or he wants to go to a bigger market, and I don't know. It just it kind of sucks as a Jazz fan that this is the, the crap that we deal with. Um, we've got an owner that has just bent over backwards to, to really facilitate Mitchell. You know, we brought Dwayne Wade into the ownership group, who's one of Mitchell's good buddies and a, and a player that he really, uh, looked up to growing up. Um, uh, there's a lot, you know, a lot there that the owner's doing to keep him happy. They just got him on a max contract, but I don't know. The, you just hear these rumors and it's discouraging. I hope they're not true. I hope that he'll stay here. Uh, because I think if the Jazz can keep Donovan Mitchell, man, they can be so good. But there's just kind of these rumors floating around that he and Rudy Gobert don't get along again. And that, you know now that's flaring up again. They're kind of going through a bad stretch. Not many people probably follow the Jazz, but unless you're from here. But they're, they're losing a bunch of games. They've got injuries galore. COVID is kind of taking a toll on the team. And they are just they're having a rough stretch right now. And I think that's probably not helping everybody's uh optimism as far as like with the team and stuff so hopefully it's all rumors hopefully mitchell will come back soon play and play well and they can make a, a good run in the playoffs and he could be happy here we can keep him because he's a great player and i, I think he's going to be a superstar and I, I i like him i really hope we can keep him 
keep him around. So fingers crossed on that. But, you know, he's just got all the makings of a star. And so even at this young phase of his career, um, I'm going to make him my my two guard in this all-time jazz lineup. So that is my five. So everybody, please go check out RJ Collect Sets. He's a Phillies guy. So you know right there, he's a smart guy. He's a bright mind. He collects the Phillies and roots for the Phillies. Um, he's got a great channel and uh, he just hit 200. So, you know, I, I for me, he's a much watched channel. Um, I watch his videos all the time when they pop up. So uh, give him a give him a look. You'll be happy you did. And uh, we'll get him to 300 here in no time. So thank you for the opportunity, RJ. I appreciate it if you do watch this. And uh, we'll catch everybody on the next video.